Bismillah ar rahim First, you have to be sure that your life has made a change before and after tariqah. Why are you going to enter into tariqat? Why are you going to take bayat if you're not going to change your life? Especially this tariqat, tariqat of Aliyah. This Jamaat, the Osman the Naqshbandi, is not a game. You want to play games, you're not going to feel comfortable after a while. You enter into the tariqat to turn your whole life around. It's not to continue your life. This is not Pakistani tariqat or Indian tariqat, or Chinese, or whatever, that you take a sheikh because you have someone to pray for you. Better. So you're using him as a what? Courier service? Huh? Because his, uh, uh, how you say, postal service is much quicker to Allah, other than you. So entering into tariqat, then using the sheikh, and... Your life doesn't change, does it? So many people don't want their lives to change, especially these rich people, let me say. Rich people, they don't want their lives to change. When they enter to tariqat and everything, it's, okay, don't tell me what to do in my life, okay? Just pray for me, Yani, and everything will be okay. Not this tariqat, not the way of the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam. So you don't see too many rich people around here. Doesn't matter we're rich or poor, young or old, black or white, your life has to change. What is it that you want to change? That thing you ask yourself. What is it that I want to change? Why I'm taking the bayat? Why I am joining the tariqah? Ask yourself. Ask yourself and ask yourself again and again. This is tafakkur. This is asking yourself. This is questioning yourself before you are being questioned. This is what's going to happen judgment day times 1000% difficulty. You understand? They're going to ask you every single question, especially for men. For women, not, not too many questions. For men, there is. You have a shay. Why do you want to have a shay? Because I want blessings. No. Then your level is very low. I want my prayers to be answered. Then your level is still very low. Because this is the tariqat of the Sahabis. I'm not saying this. Imam Rabbani is saying this. They changed their whole lives. And their lives, judging by worldly standards, their life did not get better after they gave the shahadat. Did their lives get better? Did they live in palaces? Did everything work for them? Nice job, nice house, nice children, everything was nice. No, it didn't. Correct or not? It got worse. More oppression, more persecution, more sacrifice, more. But they were living in paradise because they were with that one who is the owner of paradise. And when they took the shahadat, it wasn't also for so many people taking the shahadat, personal salvation, to borrow from Christian word. I don't like to borrow from Christian word. Islam is 1400 years old. We have enough words to use. Now I see imams there, yeah, giving the khutbah, talking about grace. Yeah. There is no word Islam from Arabic, Farsi, strong, I'm talking about strong Eastern uh, languages, Ottoman Turkish, that is taken from East and West, from both the Slavic and the Latin languages, and Arabic and Persian, and then mixing it up to become something that is so sophisticated, you have to use the word grace. But this is because Muslims, we admire non-Islam. Admiring. Admire through the heart. 
That's why you keep picking out certain things without understanding what it is. Anyway, so Sahabi Kiram, what were their lives then? What happened to them? Oh, but some of them, their lives got better after that. True. Those who were slaves, they were made uh, governors. Governors at that time, in today's terms, would be kings of different provinces. Huh? Like, for example, one person who is in charge of uh, Egypt is called a governor. But today, even the president of Egypt, that Egypt that he's ruling today is very small compared to what that governor in Islamic time was ruling. Yet, the most high-level ones, and majority of them, even when the whole world was open to them, they prefer the prophetic lifestyle. Simple. Yeah. Hazrat Bilal, he married into royal family. So what, what is it that they discovered with the Holy Prophet, alayhi wasalam, that the world became tasteless to them? Yet, that yes, they can wear, but it's not in their heart. As Hazrat Abdul Qadir Gailani Qadas al Sir, one jubba that he's wearing is worth palaces. Worth palaces. It was so expensive. But he was a fakir. What is it that they found? They found what they were looking for. What were they looking for? Riches? No. What were they looking for? They were looking for Allah. And they found it through the Holy Prophet. They cannot admire anything else. What does it mean? You have found Allah. What does it mean to find Allah? Allah is an idol and you find him? Uh, okay, you found him. According to your own understanding of finding. Then what? Then what? Oh, then I enjoy my life. Then life goes on. No, you didn't find Allah. You did not find Allah. You're looking for the Holy Prophet, Allah said to us, you found him, and then what? Look, you don't have to look too far. Look at the Sahabi Kiram. They found. Look at Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq. He found the Holy Prophet, Allah said to us, then what did he do? That is the peer of our tariqat. What did he do? His journey began. And what is that journey? That journey is every day he's suffering and when they beat him up so severely when he gained consciousness he says how is the prophet that journey is understanding whom the prophet loved and who did the prophet love this is a sticking point also he's loving his family of course everyone loves the family but is he ever putting his family other than a few hadiths that he's saying this is my family is he putting his family always above everything else no. Who does he put above? The Ummat. But who among the Ummat he puts on top? Always. The women, the poor, the orphans. Those one. And when we talk about women, it's not today's understanding of women's rights. You understand? He's talking about those women that they have no one to protect them, no one to support them, no one to help them. And there are women like that today. Is looking to the ones who are yatim, the ones who are mazlum. They understood. So what did they understand when they found the Prophet? They understood what he was living for. It's not what they were living for. It's not what they want when they are looking for salvation. It's not about them anymore. They found the beloved. Now it's about that beloved. What is it that you want? Help the sick, help the poor, everything for them. Everything for them. Ya Abu Bakr, you didn't leave anything for yourself. It's just Allah and His Prophet. I left to my wife and to my children. Meaning what? When you give everything, especially in the Sid Siddiqui way, Siddiqul Akbar way, when you give everything, and it's not just material. It doesn't mean material. It means your heart. Whatever you attach to. You give. What do you get? What do you inherit? 
Allah and his prophet. So this is the way. But what is it that you want? So many, they're coming and going, not changing. So many coming and going, tourists, years, something. They're stuck, they know that too. They look at me, I look at them and I smile. I cannot do anything else. This is not the way of forcing too. Everyone is an adult. Everyone has intelligence. Everyone must know. It's like you're following a sultan. If the kids are making too much noise for the duration of the sohbat, bring them out if they're distracting. I'm saying this so many times. Huh? Let me not interrupt the sohbat. They are not going to be happy with you. Hmm? Yeah. So this is the way. What are you looking for then? You want your lives to continue as it is but become better. That's what people say because there's no faith. This is no faith kind of talk. They did a documentary about Hajj. They're asking this rich man from Malaysia how he changed your life. Say, oh, I think I become a better one. I become better father, better uh, husband, better businessman, better this, better that. Subhanallah. Then your Hajj is like a donkey who circled around seven times the Kaaba and you came back as a donkey. That means you didn't even take one step to the Hajj, to the house of Allah. You didn't take one step. Because to make that Hajj, to understand, to take that one step is to say, everything else is confusion except for Allah. As he himself says in the Quran al Karim, to know that your wives and your children and your wealth is nothing but confusion to you. This is for people who are looking for Iman, real faith, real closeness to Allah. So people entering in Tariqat, either they're stuck, they want to continue their lives. And so many shaykhs, they don't, don't even dare to tell them you read, yes or no, right or wrong, move like this or like this. Because they're scared, number one, because they're getting something in their hands. You understand? They're getting something in their hands. So they cannot say, especially these rich kind of murids. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, follow those who ask you no fee. I just had a visitor today from Algeria. He's saying, please, can you bless this water? I said, oh, of course. Yes. I was it for? She says, nothing, just as a, as a blessing. She says, every time I go to such places, I'm asking, but where do I put my money? Or how much is it? Uh, shock. He says, this is the common practice. It's common not only in North Africa, it's common everywhere, especially in the Indian subcontinent. Oh. Then you become like those Jews then. You become like the Christians, exactly. Your religion is traded for dollars. Because you have people coming to you and they believe you, and they love you. And they want to give everything to you also. But those ones, are they real? Are they trained? Do they have permission? And not so many, even if they're real or they're trained or they have permission, they have the power to change people's lives. They don't. So they just collect. When the sheikh comes in town, oh, oh filled up everywhere, thousands. Sheikh goes, everyone will go back to their own normal uh, dunya life. Once the sheikh comes, up again, everyone, always oh, strong, 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 the sheikh leaves, up like this. This is tariqat? This is Islam? These ones also, they're very smart, these so-called sheikhs. They say, I don't want to waste my time with them so much. They don't listen anyway. <laughs> Look at our murids, who is going to listen? But those who listen and say, I want to change my life, very few. The very few. And Allah praises the very few in the Quran al Kirim. So we're not looking to see this. You may find the Sohbats getting harder and harder these days. People are going to get very upset with me. It's okay. 
I have to speak what my Shaykh is teaching me. My Shaykh didn't pass 500 years. So there's still in living memory people who have seen him to tell me to my face whether this is something that Shaykh Abdul Karim brought or he didn't bring. And let me tell you what he brought. Maybe, no kidding, huh? 75% of you will find it too hot, too heavy to carry. But, like I said, what is this? The Sahabe Kiram. You think it's easy to carry that? That what makes the Sahabe Kiram the most honored one after the prophets? The most honored one. No saint, no matter how high he is, can even come close to the lowest level Sahabi. In them I come. Let's not talk quibble and uh, no. You understand? So, your life must change. Then you must know, what is it that I want to change? That means you have thought, it's like a man who goes to a doctor. I never heard of any man going to a doctor, going to the doctor and says, yes, what can I do for you? Uh, just give me some Advil. Just give me some medical advice. It's okay. Everyone is very specific. What they go, why they go, what they have to do and everything. The, the spiritual doctor for 1400 years, the people were specific, especially in the Naqshbandi Tariqat. In the tariqat that trains the sultans and the pashas and the viziers, it is even more. Because you have to learn how to rule now. First, you have to learn how to rule this kingdom. People are not even realizing, what, I have a kingdom? I have an ego? Really? I have an ego? I'm not so bad person, you know. I pray. I don't want to kill no one. Oh, then you're completely sleeping. Sleep. What am I going to do then? So many Muslims, when we speak about the ego and shaitan and dunya and all these enemies, they're sitting down and it's not that bad. It's talking to me as if, as if I'm, sh I'm shaitan. I'm not shaitan. Oh, then you're not ready. Yes, now people that are coming, they're eager to take bayat. I said, of course, our shaykh's mercy extends to everyone. I'm watching them. They're making misstep here and saying, watch out. They don't listen. They're making another misstep there. It says, watch out. Before you know it, they make another misstep and they start questioning. Questioning this way. Questioning what is happening. And I said, do a favor to yourself. You are not ready for this way. Go get yourself ready. If you want, come back. Otherwise, go. Go. I had an open warning from Sheriff Andy. It says, no need to collect too many people. Just few people around you, keep them and train them well. And that's what I'm planning to do. But is this for seven years? Was I in a mission to collect people? Or do I always say, I wish there were fewer people. I wish there were first time I've come to Pasek, I'm saying I wish there were fewer people because the Sohbat then, it is completely different. So, now, what are you looking for? If you're looking for that to change your life, to come closer, but knowing that your life, like the Sahabi Kiram, they came from Jahiliya, Istafirullah, I don't like to speak like that, but they came from Jahiliya, and they enter into the oceans of the Fahri Alam. So, you meet a Shaykh in this way. What is your Jahiliya? Or do you admit that you have a Jahiliya? Do you admit that you are burying daughters in the hot sand? Do you admit that you are killing? Do you admit that you are in complete gaflat to your Lord and to his orders? Do you know that? You know that. Did you want to change? Yes, I want to change. Did you change? Yes, I changed. Changing for one year and then for the rest of the years, I don't feel like changing. That's not change. 
There's a name for that. In the Prophet ﷺ's time, the ones who left the teachings, but they still stick around. What are they called? You haven't changed. You haven't made one step now. So what is it that you want? Brett, I'm looking at people and I say, this one should already be, uh, uh, let me say, this one should already be a graduate, but he's still stuck in middle school. Years should already be a graduate. This one, oh, he should be postgraduate. This one, I should have sent him already to become a professor to teach other people. He's still stuck in high school. How am I going to say to you? If I'm going to say to you, you're going to get upset with me too. But you're not making changes. I don't blame so much if they're a little bit older. People are more set in their ways. But the younger ones, what are you doing? Hmm? Some coming here once a week in the presence. We're making a zikr. We're calling on Allah. We're calling on the Holy Prophet. You cannot even wear Islamic clothes. You have to wear. I'm talking to the men's, I'm not talking to the women's. You have to wear all your tight jeans to show everything. You want me to say more? I told you you're going to get upset with me. But this is something I'll share with you every week. Newcomers will come in and say, You, what are you doing, huh? You're wearing t shirt? They say, You idiot. Don't you know even to expose your hands is this maku for men? What are you doing? You're wearing a hoodie? With the Yahudi words over your heart, uh, what is it, what does it say? Just go for it. What? <laughs> Just do it over your heart. You're supposed to put the name of Allah over your heart. You're not even understanding to you. You didn't take one step in tariqat. So what is stopping us from making just these very small changes? Once a week for the pleasure of Allah. Don't look to please me. I can't do anything to you. Ego. So you don't even understand the tricks and traps of your ego. You're stuck. Sometimes huge machineries, they are stuck only by something very small. So you still haven't discovered what that is. Some they're coming, they're not even covering their heads. Some they're coming and say, cover your heads. What's stopping you from putting on a turban? Don't tell me you're doing that 24 hours so you get so tired from outside. You come here, ah, I just want to relax. No. You understanding? Oh, but I don't think I'm ready. Bleh, you have those words to say when Azrael comes to you? What if Azrael comes to you? What if Azrael comes to you when you're wearing a turban? What if Azrael comes to you and you're wearing a baseball cap? What if Azrael comes to you and you are, because I'm saying very hard words, and you're still upset with me, but you think he's kind of right, but and you're thinking of Allah and how to please him, Azrael comes to you that time? Or if Azrael comes to you when you're just thinking, oh, this girl, she's kind of hot, you know, I wonder what the... What if Azrael comes to you when you're in the bathroom? Big problem. So now, you're not leaving Jahiliya. You don't want Jahiliya. You love Jahiliya. You want Jahiliya and you want a little bit of Ahirat. Just for a little bit of color, you know? Just like uh, Pakistani food. You have this and you put some spices on top. So that you don't know what you want. You still haven't come out from that. Then there's not much that you can do. I'm not saying you're a bad person. But I'm saying you should already be hope all the way there. And there is work for you when you are there for Allah and His Prophet. That time you're going to work for your faith. But you're still here because you still want to play. You still want to play. When are you going to wake up as a believer? We are sent here to play. Allah is saying in the Quran, we send mankind here to play. Some play. Some play basketball. Some play cricket. Some play grasshopper. Some play cockroach. But nonsense kind. 
something must strike your life you say there is a major shift there is a sea change now we are on the boat we're in the ark we cannot take our own boat and go around we are in the ark this is Ahir Zaman we're in the ark the ark of what of the Ahlul Bayt we're in the ark of who the safety of Nuh safety now it's not even about makams or stations it's about safety but not too many they listen what can we do but man that sits down he understands I say, he says I tried I tried to live in this life is not bringing me any peace is not bringing me any fulfillment I tried to lead myself I tried to say I'm the guide of my own life I know how to read and write and I'm going to look and I'm going to understand I'm going to take I'm going to filter by myself the one who is sincere sincerely looking Allah will send him to the highest place he says now you are understanding you are ready for a guide not just someone to say Amin to you not just someone to lead you in prayer not just someone to give you some nice life uh, advice a little bit here and there now you are ready to follow just as Sahabi follows the Holy Prophet oh, that time yes you may enter into the circles of the area you may enter into the circles of the Nabis what is their circle it is not to see different colors and shape no now you enter as a Sahabi Hiram did you enter into their mission and what their work is why Allah sent them to the world I'm not making this so I didn't prepare this I didn't think about this I'm taking what my Shah is sending me and this is I'm not doing this because it's new year we have to make new year resolution now to become better murids this is a fake illusion and delusion calendar that not only Muslims are celebrating murids are celebrating has been Allah So, how are we going to die before we die? You still love the life of the Jahiliya, you didn't die from that yet. Then you're not going to enter into a new life. If you don't, if you don't change, and you don't change, and you don't change, when you fear from it, then you're still stuck in the animal level. And you will be judged according to that. So many, so many men, humankind, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, uh, we have honored the children of Adam. We have created mankind to represent us. So many on the day of judgment in this nation, in these times, they're going to appear on judgment day in the shape of animals, not as humans. Living as animals, dying as animals. How you live, how you believe, is how you're going to live. How you live is how you're going to die. How you die is how you're going to get resurrected. You think being a man, human is working 9 to 5? Taking care of a couple of things? Enjoying yourself? Oh, praying 5 times a day like a thief? In and out, in and out. That is being the Khalifatullah. It's not even being a human. And your Lord never forgets you. Your Lord is not ignorant of you and your Lord is not unmerciful and uncaring to you and your Lord is looking into your heart every day and your Lord is sad when he's not seeing himself in your heart uh, people have become just that heartless heartless uh, so I'm telling you the Ottomans when they even when they give Ilahis when the way that they describe Allah Jan Allah, Janam Allah. You don't really see this in so many other languages.
the kind of tenderness that they would feel to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah is providing everything. Oh, where are we? Anyway, take this any way that you want. If you like it, if it's useful for you, take it, put it in your life. You're not going to lose. If you don't like it, you say this man is talking nonsense, leave it. I'll take it. Say to him, say to yourself, he's just shouting like a crazy man for himself. It's okay. But I'm going to be questioned. You are going to be questioned, especially for the murids. And tonight, <laughs> I did my work. I did my job. I'm to be questioned for what I'm saying. And if I'm following what I'm saying by myself, and you are going to be questioned if you heard. And if you are following what you heard. If you are not murids, if it is useful, take it. But, you are going to thank me one day. You are not going to find this kind of talk. Too much anywhere. May Allah forgive me and bless you. Wa min Allahu tafiq al-Fatiha.